How's it going you guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you my results from my recent uh, serum ferritin blood test where I went to, I ordered my own uh, blood test from LabCorp and the next day just went into the lab, got my blood drawn and then they emailed me the results. Um, so I've been on a carnivore diet, uh, well I guess you could say I've been getting about at a minimum two pounds of red meat every single day and getting uh, four ounces of liver every other day, something to that extent. Um, for the last three years, I've been eating nothing but red meat, organs, uh, I'll eat some cheese here and there, uh, but lately it's just been red meat, organs, um, honey, and fruit. Uh, and keep in mind before you crucify me on the honey and fruit thing, I am a jiu-jitsu athlete. I train uh, twice a day sometimes, anywhere from four to sometimes seven days a week, so I'm extremely active. But nonetheless, I've been eating mostly red meat, um, two pounds min minimum since November of 2018. And before that, I was eating around a one pound of red meat a day, give or take. Um, so I've been eating a lot of red meat since 2015, really, after I stopped being vegan and I found that a autoimmune paleo diet reversed my uh, autoimmune illness. So what did all this red meat do to my ferritin, to my basically a measure of iron in, in the blood, basically? Well, uh, my iron levels, if you can see that, it's right there in the middle. That's 209 nanograms per milliliter, okay? The reference range is 30 to 400 nanograms per milliliter, according to, to this test, okay? I've seen other measures that say something like 100 to 300 nanograms per milliliter, but no matter what the reference range is from where you're looking at it, I am right in the middle of pretty much all the healthy range uh, ranges that have been established. So what does that tell you about eating red meat? What it tells me is that it definitely does not contribute to iron overload unless you have hemocrytosis, which is a genetic predisposition to iron overloading in the blood. And the thing is, even people who, um, so people who actually have hemocrytosis, when they get their blood levels of iron to a healthy range, if they do not donate blood after a month or two, um, their blood levels will creep past, you know, the healthy range. It, it will go out of control. Um, and so the point is, I would, it would show on my blood test after six years of eating all this meat, especially after three years of eating two pounds of red meat a day or more, sometimes three pounds of red meat a day. So if red meat was, you know, contributing to excess iron in the body, like all these vegans say and all these other people, then I would see it on my test, but I don't. So, um... Another thing is that there's actually a lot of people who have made videos um, and documented their, their experiences on a carnivore diet who have hemocrytosis and they report um, a regulating of their iron levels over time, which is really weird. They're eating more iron, but their iron overload actually goes seems to go into remission. Now, I'm not claiming that that's the case, but I'm just saying you should go and check for people's experiences on, with hemocrytosis on carnivore diets. It might be that hemocrytosis is actually triggered as an autoimmune response to something else that they're eating. But um, yeah, generally supplemental iron, especially from fortified foods, tend to be the worst culprit because that type of iron uh, doesn't break down or doesn't limit in, with, uh, when it's digested and absorbed the same way that naturally occurring iron from whole foods does. So it might be that red meat I, uh, heme iron acts differently than some of the iron you find in these fortified foods and things. Uh, so one more thing is that you'll find there's a ex-carnivore named Frank Tefano who made a video claiming that he had iron overload or something like that. The fact is, number one, um, that guy has a huge track history of lying. I've made plenty of videos already exposing him. I might make one more video uh, pointing, you know, talking about his supposed iron overload. 
But what you need to know is during that time, it seems like he was taking performance enhancing drugs to create a body composition, body composition change. He's basically on steroids. Um, and one of the things that happens when you're on anabolic agents is that uh, something like your blood gets thicker or you have more uh, a buildup of red blood cells. And so in order to stay healthy, you have to keep donating blood. And so for some reason, he decided to use that against the carnivore diet. Um, I guess assuming that someone's going to find out he's donating, donating blood and want to know why, so he made an excuse. I don't know why, but um, it does seem like he was on anabolic steroids. He had gynecomastis well, gynecomastia surgery leading up to that. And also, uh, we there's proof that he he was uh, actually asking questions and, and browsing through steroid forums and communities on the internet. And he also just so happened to have a drastic increase in muscle mass around the same time that he got gynecomastia surgery. So all of that kind of t says that he was probably on anabolic ag agents. But hey, look, all I'm saying is that um, unless you have hemochromatosis, probably not a big deal because yeah, I clearly don't have um, iron overload and I've been eating more meat than most people that do get iron overload. So anyway, leave your question in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Um, let me know your experiences. Have you gotten your iron levels tested? Have you been on the carnivore diet with hemochromatosis? I'll talk to y'all next time.